so as a first example of an application of the gradient operator, I'm going to show you how you can find Taylor series of functions in more than one dimension. Okay, so in one dimension, let me just briefly remind you, because I'm going to change the notation slightly. In one dimension, suppose that you want to work out the value of the function f at some point x plus v in terms of the derivatives of the function at the point x. And the formula was this is equal to the sum and goes from 0 to infinity of the nth derivative of f at x over n factorial times v to the n. So I've changed the notation slightly, but you hopefully you can recognize this is the same definition we saw in one dimension. Okay, And of course, there's some question mark over equals about convergence of the Taylor series, but provided this converges for most functions you see in physics, it is equal to the function. So we want to find an equivalent expression to this in more than one dimension. Now the method I'm going to show you works in any dimension, but um, in common with most of the videos this week, uh, I'm only going to show you the two-dimensional case, because the two-dimensional case you can still draw some pictures. Okay. So I'll derive it in two dimensions, but as I say, it will work in any dimension. So in two dimensions then, what we need to do is find the function at a point vector x plus vector v, and I want to do it in terms of the derivatives of the function at the point x. If I do this on this picture here, I can take the point x as being somewhere here. Okay, so let's suppose that's the point here. Okay, and then I can point, let's take v as being a vector along here. Okay, so this point here is x plus v. Okay, and I want to find out what is the value of the function at this point here. Now you can see that you can reduce this to the one-dimensional case just by considering only the change of the function in the direction of v. So in other words, I can consider just the one-dimensional function of, along this line here. Okay. So then this is a one-dimensional problem now because we only look at the function on here, so then I can use the one-dimensional formula. So first of all, I'm going to write the vector v is equal to some length v times v hat. Okay. So here v hat is going to be a unit vector in the direction of v. So if I draw it down here, v hat is a vector pointing in the same direction as v, but has length 1. Okay, And then multiply by the length to get that. Now we know that the gradient from the previous video, we know that the gradient of the function f in the direction of v is given by v hat, so that's the unit vector in that direction, dot the gradient of the function f. So this defines the gradient of the function f in the direction of v. Okay, but what's this? This is what you have here is just another function of position x, right? So as you move along, it tells you the gradient of the function along this direction. So in other words, it's the first derivative of this one-dimensional function here. So to find the second derivative, derivative of f in direction of v, so this is the first derivative, I just need to do the same thing again to this function. So in other words, I need to take, oh, I'm sorry, not v, the unit vector v dot grad and apply it to this function. So it's v dot grad, v dot grad, f. Okay. And that again defines you 
a function of x which is equal to the second derivative of f in the direction of v. Okay, and then hopefully you can see how the pattern is going. So the nth derivative of f in the direction of v is going to be unit vector v dot grad to the power n applied to f. So what this means is you take f, take gradient dot v, take gradient dot v, take gradient dot v, take gradient dot v, n times. Okay, and that will tell you the nth derivative of the function f in the direction of v. Okay, now just by adapting the one-dimensional formula then we can get the result because therefore f of x plus v is equal to the sum and goes from 0 to infinity of the nth derivative of f but we've found out now that's just given by this so that's v dot grad to the power n of f evaluated at the point x divided by m factorial and then you have to multiply it by the, the distance from x so in this case the distance here is just the length of the vector v to the power n then you see that you can take the, this is just a, a number, right? It's a scalar. So you can take the length here inside the unit vector v here and then use the fact that unit vector times length is just equal to the original vector v. So finally, you can write this down. Okay, let me squeeze in here so I don't have to use any piece of paper. This is just the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of the full vector v dot grad to the power n applied to f evaluated at the point x divided by m factorial. Okay. And that's our final formula for the Taylor expansion. Okay, so that's the formula for the Taylor expansion in well I derived it in two dimensions, but it works in any dimension. Okay, so let's see what this looks like then in a bit more detail. So we have that the Taylor series of f of x plus v around the point x is what I wrote up there. So it's the sum n goes from 0 to infinity v dot grad the power n applied to f evaluated to x divided by m factorial. Okay. So let's look at the term by term. So if n equals 0, I just get f of x, right? So that's the first term in the Taylor series. Nice and easy. If n equals 1, then I get v dot grad of f. So, and evaluated to x. So this is vx df by dx plus vy df by dy evaluated at the point x. Right? Because this is grad f and this is v. If n equals 2, then I get v dot grad squared applied to the point f of x. which is equal to v dot grad, so that's vx d by dx plus vy d by dy applied to this thing, vx df by dx plus vy df by dy. Okay, and all that evaluated to x. So then I can take the derivatives inside here and you get, okay, so the first one, I get this and that, so that gives me vx squared d2f by dx squared, and then from here I get vx vy d2f by dx dy, and I get another one of those from here, like vy vx d2f by dy dx, that's the same thing. So you get two vx vy d2f by dx dy, Okay, 
and then finally this term is vy squared d2f pi dy squared okay and all of that evaluated at the point x and so on so we don't often have to use terms higher than two in the Taylor expansion so I'll stop there okay so that gives you a generic formula um, however similarly to one dimension the way you actually calculate the Taylor series in two or three dimensions is generally not using this formula um, this formula gives you a good mathematical definition and it's useful for theoretical work when it comes to actual calculation um, you tend to do it a different way so in the next video I'm going to show you some examples of actual calculations of Taylor series in more than one dimension.